Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid. We previously made our way through the communications tower, but now Joe is going to get out of here and hopefully make it further along the way to encounter the Metal Gear itself. And based on the length of this video, it looks like it's going to be quite the long experience, so I imagine there's going to be a lot happening. You're probably right, though. Once this elevator comes around, then we'll have a nice smooth exit to this place, and we'll see what's up ahead. Ooh, boy, I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. I'm going to go down on this elevator, and then I'm going to make the Metal Gear go down, and then once we meet Merrill, then I'm going to go down. Okay, we don't need you to finish that sentence. I think we need to set up a new rule to where any time Joe decides to tell us about Merrill or Sniper Wolf, we just cut him off because this has been going on for a while, and I don't know how much more of his ramblings I can take. That's probably the best idea you've ever come up with, but I think there's something important in this codec call we should be listening to. Math class. I thought I'd get one for you, so I went back to the lab and... Yeah? The four suits were missing. Also, about the elevator that I checked out, it's really strange. It was like someone was intentionally holding it. So this guy really didn't think until now to get a stealth suit from the lab that we were at earlier so Snake could have it, and he just had multiple others around. I knew he could have given us one earlier. How is it that he's so smart when it comes to actually creating technology that makes the wearer invisible, but he doesn't think about when he should actually use it? I'm surprised he even made it this far. Look out, Snake. The guys who stole my stealth prototypes are in there with you. I kind of wonder how someone could even steal a suit that's made to be invisible. Like, how would you know where to look for it and how to put it on? That seems kind of weird. I don't mean to take away from the tension of this scene, but it is interesting to think about. Very interesting to think about. But I think what's more important now is knowing how Joe is going to handle this fight in such a compact place. Honestly, guys, I don't have any strategies. I'm just shooting and hoping everything works out well. I'm completely out of ideas now. It was bound to happen at some point. I'm just surprised it didn't happen in the first 10 minutes of the game. Honestly, I've gotten through most of this game with very little issue, so I think at this point I'm pretty much invincible, not in the way that I can't be killed, but more in that nothing is going to worry me here. Perhaps you're right. I don't think there's anything that we need to worry about. Now, let's just not get too confident in ourselves, otherwise we're going to fall apart like our golf games, since that happens a lot there. Good thing Ben's not playing and there's no volcano around, otherwise the playthrough would be over. Okay, I get it. That was like seven or so videos ago, maybe even more by now, and it's not even the same game that's being played now. All right, all right, fair enough also, Joe. Good job for making it through, even though you didn't have any actual plan for that. Oh yeah, I'm kind of surprised I made it myself. What's important is that you're done now, and I'm pretty sure you're almost out of this tower, and we can all finally move on to something more interesting looking. Hey, Joe, you only have one chaff grenade. I'm certainly hoping you won't be needing them too much. Otherwise, any cameras coming up are going to be quite the problem. Yeah, I know how the game works by now, thanks. But I wonder why there's the sniper rifle ammunition in here. I didn't think we would need it much after the fight a couple parts ago. Not sure, but gotta love the cheap shot right there. Oh, good. We're finally outside now for some better scenery. We haven't seen the outside without being shot at the same time in a while. You were saying... Okay, that was pretty bad timing, but how was I supposed to know that would happen? Snake, are you okay? Otacon, were there any other stealth prototypes? No, there were only five. So, this is the stealth camouflage then. What are you talking about? Someone's aiming at me, in the middle of this blizzard. It's her! Wolf? Oh, yeah! Err. My number one lady with a sniper rifle is here. I missed you after you tried to shoot at me last time. Ah! Calm down, Joe. I've never seen someone so excited to see someone who just shot them. Oh, you don't understand the bond. Her and I have it as special as the one between I, Meryl and I. Joe Sniper Wolf has shot Meryl, left you to get electrocuted in the torture chamber and shot at you. She has provided nothing positive to your life. Well, I'm going to send you a love letter, my dear. Do you know what that is? It's a bullet straight from my gun to your heart. Please, Wolf, Snake, no! Quiet! Don't get in our way. Now Guys, uh, I don't know if I have it in me to kill Sniper Wolf. I know we can't progress without doing it, but uh, I still want her with me. That's it, Joe. I'm taking the controller again, and I'm going to fight her, Ben and Barack. 
I need you to hold Joe down while I defeat Sniper Wolf. Otherwise, Joe's gonna stop me. This is really sad that we have to hold down the President of the United States in order to stop him from oversimping on a PlayStation game character. This would have never happened if a Republican was in office. I'm inclined to argue with that last part, but right now we just have to focus on keeping Joe away. No, ho, 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 you can't keep me down, Egg. Uh, <laughs> Donald, don't hurt her. I'll rig the election again if you do that. <laughs> I knew you rigged the election, and I'm glad you admitted. And finally, I know there was that one time where you said it in that golf map, but I forgot about that until now. No. Unless you fight, you better stop right there. Or... <laughs> Joe, hold it together. I'm trying to make this as quick as I can, since you're obviously not in a position to make your own decisions or really anything that requires sanity. For someone who's trying to do this section quickly, you're not doing a good job of it. Can't you bring out the sniper rifle and just shoot her? That would be a lot faster. I took the controller once or something to knock out Merrill during the Psycho Mantis fight. I'm not sure how to play this. I'm surprised I can aim this well enough. I'm glad she's not really trying to shoot the missile, otherwise we'd be finished. <laughs> okay, Donald, if I calm down, will you give me the controller back? Uh... So I can play the game again? This is not a time to be making negotiations. We're keeping you down while Donald finishes her off in a really slow way that prolongs everybody's suffering by quite a lot. We're almost done, just like two or three more, and she's done. Ooh. <sighs> Donald, please, no, I'll give you the presidency. I'm... I'll give you ice cream. I'll, well, actually, no, I, I won't give you the ice cream, but please don't kill her. Sorry, Joe, as much as this pains you, this has to happen, Sniper Wolf. It's time you get a taste of the Big D. I wonder how she could take so many of those shots to begin with. Let's see if she also comes with a monologue about her life. Waited for this moment. I am a sniper. Yeah, we got the idea when your code name was Sniper Wolf and you used a sniper rifle to kill us. Perhaps you should have a neon sign to make it more obvious. <laughs> I am long shot. You cannot save me. Of course, we can't save you. The goal was to kill you. What did you think was happening that whole time? Just finish me quick. I am a card. I have always dreamed of a peaceful place like this. A card. So that's why you're called Wolf. Interesting how this is the place she imagines as a peaceful place for death especially when it was completely of her own free will to shoot at Snake. Maybe this was on some level intentional, or perhaps I'm just looking too deep into it. Yeah, I think you're just looking too deeply into this. Still a thought-provoking topic. Perhaps I'll make a video about it online to appease my fan base that also enjoys Metal Gear by coincidence. That was my life. Each morning I'd wake up and find a few more of my family or friends dead beside me. I stare at the morning sun and pray to make it through the day. Oh, hey, would you look at that? It was the monologue I was guessing would happen. I assume this, this is all trying to make her seem like a sympathetic character despite all the time she shot at Snake and Meryl along with working for the main villains. My hero. He took me away from all that. Saladin? You mean Big Boss? I became a sniper. Hidden. Watching everything through a rifle scope. 
Hey, Joe, it's been a while since we've heard from you. Are you doing okay? I know it must be a lot to watch the fictional game character you saw for all of maybe five minutes die. Yes, actually, I have a lot of thoughts I want to express about this. All right, I suppose you deserve that. Let's hear it. It was when we first met, we didn't have a great start. I watched as Meryl, my number one woman, got shot by her, but despite that, I knew there was a feeling that came up then that I'd never felt before. Except with Meryl, of course. I was so conflicted with how I thought that I went on a revenge quest by obtaining the sniper rifle and shot her back. But I realized the way to progress, not in the game though, rather emotionally, was not to fight. It was to love. And by that, I mean I wanted to get off Shadow Moses Island with both of them and have living arrangements to where all three of us would be together naturally. Wait, what? After our first encounter, I saw her in the torture room and knew she wasn't going to kill me there, which was obviously a sign that she was willing for all of us to be together in the end. As much as I enjoyed the torture sequence towards the end, I knew that it was only temporary and that what Meryl and Sniper Wolf and I had was special and needed to see it through to the end. That was, of course, when election-denying Donald came Fake in news. and hijacked my plan. I fought against it, but towards the end of the really overly drawn-out fight, where nothing interesting was happening, I realized it was inevitable. I thought I would be angrier at Donald for being directly responsible for killing the one purpose for me being alive other than Meryl but I feel at peace for some reason. I think in some way this decision was for the best, as Meryl probably wouldn't approve of being with me while I was with the woman who shot her. So in some strange way, I'm glad Sniper Wolf died because it would have really complicated things. Basically, I'm over her death now. Joe, she hasn't even technically died yet, but that's not even in the top 10 worst things about what you just said. You've been simping over her and devolving your speech to the cavemen times, which you were probably alive for and now you're just over it like that. What is wrong with you? You know, honestly, I agree with you, but I'd rather take Indifferent Joe over Insane Joe at this point. You're a hero. Please, set me free. Why? Why? I love you. Well, Joe, if there is an upside in this, at least you don't have to fight over her affection with Otacon. What is it? My gun. Give it to me. She's part of me. Everyone's here now. If only Meryl were here too, then it would be everyone. She would mainly be here for me because of course she would though. I don't think she would really care about her due to the whole shooting her incident. Not sure how you keep disregarding that so easily. I just forget to care about things. It's pretty easy. Goodbye. Snake, you said that love could bloom on the battlefield. But I couldn't save her. Nobody gets saved when they run into the big D. Can you stop saying that? It has a very different meaning depending on how you take it. Oh, they definitely take it, all right. Why? I don't have any more tears to shed. I'm going to the underground base. We're out of time. Oh yeah, we're on a mission here. It's hard to remember sometimes when the game decides to throw in a long story sequence where the characters stand around for a while. We're probably not in a rush. What's a few more minutes going to really matter at this point? We might not meet again. I'll hang on to my codec. I want to keep helping. You can leave any time. Get a head start. A head start on your new life. Sometimes I wish I could start a new life to where people don't always see me as a president and just as a normal person. That would be nice. Just get your non-forged birth certificate that says you were born in Kenya, and you'll be able to convince anyone you weren't the president. I didn't ask you, Donald. When are you going to stop with those conspiracy theories about my birth certificate being faked? When it stops being funny, which at this point is never. If this scene would like to end soon, that would be nice. 
I can only imagine what's been happening near the Metal Gear since we've not really been doing anything valuable in the past five or so minutes. It's not like we're even going to see Otacon again unless he plays some major part in the Metal Gear disarming sequence. I don't know. Perhaps he could have come with us, but only if I didn't save Meryl, though I think she will be fine since I didn't give her up at the torture sequence. Part of that was because you liked getting tortured, though. We got some equipment from around the area off screen. Not that it helped since Joe still got caught by the camera anyway. It's just an explanation of how he has chaff grenades now. Finally, we're moving forward. This, this is the most we've done the whole episode at this point. All right, let's see what's up next. Whoa, that was a nice animation. I think that's exclusive to the master collection. Otherwise, one of us would have to switch the discs manually, and I don't want to do that. I'm just happy there's some actual sneaking. Even if there's only one guy nearby, it feels like it's been a while since we've really had to be careful on alerting others. I don't know how loud this floor is, so I'm crawling just in case, better safe than sorry. I think you're making the right choice. Not that he's nearby anyway, so you're probably okay from here. Is this a dead end here? I think if I just stay along this wall, I can just barely get by, though. It'll be pretty close. That is good thinking. I don't think you've had to do that so far, so it's good of you to try that so quickly. And nice job avoiding that thing that just went by. That probably would have knocked you down if you didn't get down when you did. Yeah, that's right. That's what Joe does. I know you managed to avoid that box, but can you avoid this one guy down here? He looks pretty tough. Nah, he's not going to be a challenge. I have to go near him, and I'm guessing the surfaces are going to be loud but I can sneak by just fine. I've been through way worse in this game, so I don't think he's going to cause me much of an issue. So are you going to actually fight him soon, or are we just waiting for him to die of natural causes? I'm trying to be patient, considerate, learning, waiting just when the moment is right, just like a snake. Hey, maybe that's why it's his name. If you keep playing like this, he's going to be called Solid Sloth, since you're just kind of wandering around him without actually doing anything. Sounds like an average day for Joe at the White House. Any day now, Joe would be nice. Okay, I've got this. It's Bidening time. Well, you still got caught, but you got rid of him quickly enough to where it didn't really matter. I suppose that could have gone worse, so it's nice you're able to make it through even when making a small mistake like that. Hey guys, I'm pretty happy with how this has been going so far. I think we should all listen to one of my stories as a celebration. I don't think any one of us have ever asked you to tell us a story before. It's just you offering in random points. So there I was with my good friend Ugly Joe, and we were at a local science exhibit where I was bitten by a spider. For some reason, I was bit and started feeling weird, to where I could see clearly without my glasses that I usually had on, and I could stick to walls. Soon after, I learned I could shoot webs near my wrists and decided obviously I needed to fight crime. My Uncle Ben got shot or something, and I became Spider Joe. One of my good friends had a father who was something of a scientist himself and become some guy named the Green Goblin who hated me for whatever reason, telling me about the people hating me even though I was a hero. We fought each other, and after a while, he tried to kill me with his glider, but I was able to jump over it and it killed him instead. Honestly, even if it hit me like he planned, I think it still would have impaled him too, so I don't know what he was planning. The end. Joe, that was just the plot of the original Spider-Man movie? That did not happen to you. Guys, it really did happen to me. I'm not sure why you're doubting me. Okay, Joe, you said you gained the ability to shoot webs near your wrists. Do it right now and prove you can do it, then we'll believe you. Well, I would, but this happened to me quite a while ago and I forgot how to do it. Oh, wow, Joe forgetting something. What a surprise. I like how there was an entire fight that just happened on the way down, and nobody brought it up as we were all enamored with Joe's story that didn't happen to him. I don't think enamored is quite the right word for that story. Oh, sorry, I meant that I was enamored by the fact Joe thinks it happened to him, not the actual story itself. Hey, Joe, why are you pulling out a chaff grenade? I don't think there's anything around here that it would be useful for. I just get the feeling there are cameras around here with something so important I would imagine there would be security to ensure people get caught if they wanted to sneak in. 
that makes sense, although there were already guards that tried to kill you a minute ago, so your presence is pretty obvious. It's not like everything else that's happened in the game didn't give away you were here. Like blowing up the helicopter that shot at you, or the missiles that blew up at Sniper Wolf, or blowing up a tank. It's hard to hide that. Yeah, now that you mention it, Joe has bought a lot of attention to himself. Even if most of it is story related, it seems as though Snake is not as good at sneaking as he thought he was. It's a good thing the times I have gotten seen don't immediately make me lose. I can only imagine what would happen if I get a game over when caught. I heard that's actually a difficulty option in later Metal Gear Solid games, but I don't know about this one. I think we had better stay with the normal difficulty when we play these games. I don't see how it's going to work if there's a game over just by getting seen. Oh, hey, another codec call. It's been too long since the last one. I've got something to tell you about Naomi Hunter. What about her? Is this conversation secure? Don't worry, the monitor's off. Okay, what's up? I was in the FBI too, you know. I didn't know that. What's your point? Dr. Hunter's story about her background, about her grandfather being an assistant secretary to Hoover in the FBI. Yeah. And then going undercover to investigate the mafia in New York. Yeah, what about it? It was all a big lie. Yeah, I knew it. She must have come here illegally and made her way into the mission to sabotage us. I had this theory the entire time. He never said she came here illegally, you just made that up. Plus, we haven't even heard the entire discussion, so it's best not to jump to conclusions. Do you really think I would insinuate that someone came here illegally or was otherwise not born here without evidence? With the whole claiming I was born in Kenya thing, yes, I do think so. Oh, that was just a joke that got out of hand. Could it be? If I find out anything, I'll call. In the meantime, be careful. I sure am glad Master Miller is here to be sure we're not getting bad intel from the Codec people. I kind of wonder why he hasn't come up sooner with other information, though. We haven't heard a lot about him. I'm not sure myself. I guess if he was investigating, then he didn't want to make us skeptical until he was more sure of his conclusion. But either way, I think we have more important things to worry about. These crows seem familiar, as I'm pretty sure there was one when we fought the tank. That must mean Vulcan Raven is inside the next doors coming up. Though that doesn't really explain why it's so cold here. At this point, with the psychic and ninja and decoy tricks and stealth suit, I don't think the lower temperature is all that unbelievable by comparison. He has a machine gun, too. I really don't want to fight this guy. They agree. Ravens aren't scavengers like most people think. They're simply returning to the natural world, that which is no longer needed. Sometimes they even attack wounded foxes. You were the one in the M1 tank? You must have been a tight fit for a big boy like you. <laughs> I wonder if the fact he's larger than the other enemies mean he's going to have a lot more health, Joe. I think this is going to be a difficult fight for you if you aren't ready. I don't have much of a choice at this point. The judgment is decided. The Ravens say you are a true warrior. Shh. Am I hallucinating? I can't move. The Raven has put the mark of death upon you. Blood from the east flows within your veins. So if the Ravens can just make him still, wouldn't that mean Vulcan Raven could just shoot him now? That seems like a bit of an overpowered move if that comes up in the fight. I think he just wants to have more of a fair fight than that, but yes, that would be very overpowered, unless Joe were able to switch controllers for this fight too, so the Ravens couldn't do that, I'm not sure. Nevertheless, you will make a worthy adversary. You live in Alaska too. You know of the world Eskimo Indian Olympics? Yeah, I know it. it. Must be a real threat in the muck duck eating contest. Yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. It is called the ear pull. Is it even possible to pull any ears? I don't think these characters have the polygons to pull if they wanted to. It sounds like just a metaphor at this point. That would make for a very strange battle. Pull each other's ears? 
form is different, but the spirit is the same. Rejoice, Snake! Ours will be a glorious battle. This isn't glorious. It's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. Well, we'll see if there's iron in your words. All right, Joe, what's your strategy against this guy? You have to have something otherwise. You're probably not going to win. I did have a few ideas, but honestly, I'm not sure which will work best. One was to keep using the missile that Donald used against Sniper Wolf, and the other was to use a C4 when he's walking around, as I think both can hurt him, but I'm not really sure which one is better. If you try both during the fight, then you'll at least have a good idea on what to do, and perhaps both will be viable options. At least he's easy to track on the radar, but I can't really get in front of him, so I'll have to stay behind or around him. All right, let's see what the missile does. It looks like you'll have to hit him more quickly, otherwise he will see it, but maybe you can still get it close enough to explode, even if he does notice it. All right, let's do it again. Okay, it worked. If you keep going, you can probably get him quite a few more times. I intend to, now watch this. All right, you're getting pretty good at this. There's a lot left to go, but you're doing well so far. And I'm not stopping there. It's time to do it again. Wow, you are really not messing around. You're going to be done in just a minute or so at this rate. Especially if I keep shooting just like right here. Come on out. You wow, you are doing quite well. Aside from you getting hit there, this is one of the best fights you've had yet. You've barely missed at all. And you're getting a lot of damage on him. Yeah, I'll admit I should have put on my body armor earlier, but that's all right. I still have a lot of health and have rations if it does somehow get bad. I'm guessing this next hit will also be a success. Yet another great shot for me, but I'm still not done. We're about to see his health bar get even lower in just a second or so. And with that, there's only three or so more hits until he's down. Joe, you have exceeded my expectations, and I've never been more proud of your gaming skill. Thanks, Donald. Even though I just missed, I'm glad you're happy with my gameplay. There's a lot of focus that goes into this, and I'm happy I'm doing as well as I am now. Yeah, don't worry too much about missing a few times. As long as you don't get shot yourself, you should be in good condition to finish without much of a problem. Joe, you're doing fine. Just keep careful focus and aim your next shot. Uh, then you'll get him again for sure. OK, yeah, I can do this right now. That wasn't quite what I meant, but you're not getting hit, so you still have that advantage. You know what, it's time to try out the C4 strategy. That way I get him to come to me instead of shooting the missiles at him. Uh, I'm not sure about this. I know you've been missing more the past minute, but the missile strategy was working just fine, but maybe you're right. Let's see what you'll do. I don't like how that container moved over. That seems rather unstable, and I don't think you should go near it. Yeah, you're right. I'll try to stay away from it, but he's also staying pretty far from here, so I might need to go to him soon. Somehow, I don't think you getting shot was part of your plan. You really need to get away from him, otherwise he's going to start winning. Oh, what now? He's not even going near me. What's the point of the C4 strategy if he just wanders wherever he feels like, even if he just saw me and knows where I'm at? Not really sure, but I'm seeing, based on the radar, some of those containers have fallen, so at least they won't fall on you or anything. That's good and all, but it only restricts Joe's movement more, especially if he keeps trying the C4 strategy as he hasn't gotten any success yet. Well, I don't know how to make him get over to me. It's not like I have that many other options. Otherwise, he's just going to keep shooting my missiles, and then I'm still not getting any progress. Don't worry, Joe. You can't let it get to your head. Even though you're not doing as well now, you still haven't lost, and you're still capable of getting through this intact. You just have to be sure you let him come to you for the C4 to work. Okay, you're right. I'm going to make my winning move right now. Watch this. Joe, you did not let him come to you at all. In fact, you did the opposite and got shot. You may have hit him again, but that is only through pure luck and no success of your own. And look at that. Your rations are frozen and you got hit again. This is turning into a disaster so quickly. <sighs> no, 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 no. I can't lose. I'm so close to success. I can't fail. No. <laughs> Calm down, Joe. You're still in this. Even if you're falling apart, just don't give up, and you can still do this. You're right, guys. It's binding time. Okay. 
I suppose that could have gone worse, all things considered. Just as the boss said, it is my existence which is no longer needed in this world. Wow, he looks in pretty bad condition. I think it was all of those explosions I caused that would have done that. My spirit and my flesh will become one with the ravens. In that way, I will return to Mother Earth who bore me. Snake! I will be watching you, understand? I don't know how he's going to be watching over Snake if he's dead. I don't think he can mean that in a metaphorical way. Snake. Yeah, it's called the Land of the Winners. You wouldn't know since you lost when you had a tank and machine gun. How could you have possibly lost? First, I'll give you a hint. The man who you saw die before your eyes. What is it? That was not the Darker Chief. We actually figured that part out a while ago. That's not really new information. Maybe he will tell us something else that will help. He copied his subjects down to the blood. So he drained the chief's blood and took it into himself. But he wasn't able to deceive the angel of death. The angel of death? Okay, never mind, that didn't help us in the slightest. If anything, that just made it more cryptic. Oh, were we supposed to be listening to him? I've not been paying attention. That is the end of my hint. You must solve the rest of the riddle yourself. Snake, in the natural world, there's no such thing as boundless slaughter. There's always an end to it. I don't know, those ravens seem to be pretty boundless in their slaughter. If only they did this a few minutes ago, it would have made the fight way easier. Each step you take is paved with the corpses of your enemies. Their souls will haunt you forever. You shall have no peace. Hear me, Snake. My spirit will be. I have no idea what to make of that, to be honest. I imagine the Codec people will have something to add, like always, to make it more confusing. Oh wow, great timing. Snake, it's me, Master. It's about Naomi. Turn your monitor off. What about Naomi? <sighs> Colonel, is Naomi there? No, she's away. She's taking a short nap. Hmm. So what is this about Naomi? Okay, maybe we better let the Colonel hear this too. I don't think we should. He's been keeping a lot from us and it's likely he's known she's been hiding things too. It's not Dr. Naomi Hunter at all. What? I thought her story of her background sounded kind of fishy, so I checked it out. And? There is an actual Dr. Naomi Hunter, or I should say, there was one. But she's not the woman we know. Huh. I told you all she wasn't here legally. She probably voted for Joe, too. And this was all part of the plan to rig the election from me. No, she wasn't part of my plan to rig the election. So you think she had a part in the uprising? Or she could be working with some different group altogether. Different group? It couldn't be. Placed her under arrest. What? She's betrayed us. I suppose this could still be worse, as we didn't really need to talk with her all that much. We're still going through the mission fine, even if she did lie about who she is. Not that it's any kind of excuse, but not something that damaged what our goals were. Some kind of vital secret or something? Does this have anything to do with the mysterious deaths of the DARPA chief and the Armstech president? I... I have no idea. 
Anyway, we cannot allow her to participate any further in this mission. If he's right about her being connected to their deaths, then it would definitely affect the mission. Oh, I didn't realize those would have been connected. That certainly is a much bigger issue then. Hurry then. We've got to figure out who she is and what she's doing here. I understand. Snake, give me some time. I don't have any time left for you. That was certainly a lot to take in. I wonder how this is all going to unravel coming up. I don't know myself, but we don't have to worry about that now. We'll just have to take care of that next time as we're about finished today. That was a pretty exciting section, all things considered. Beat two of the main enemies before getting to the Metal Gear, especially as Joe had his own issues that were resolved even if it was an incredibly strange way of doing so. I'm just glad nobody has to hold down Joe again in the playthrough, or at least I assume that won't be happening. Now, unless Sniper Wolf comes back to life or something, I don't think that will be a problem. But who knows what would happen by the time the game is over. We appreciate all of the support that has been given to the channel as of late. At the time of the video, we're almost at 3,000 subscribers. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, people.